I didn't have sex with my husband for five months and he had an affair. Really? Let's talk about this. What did you expect would happen? Now that's just my opinion and you don't have to agree with me. Just kidding. Let's actually talk about this. When our society discusses issues politely with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. This one goes out to all of the articles just like this, discussing something for which common sense provides a perfect answer as if it is a new and unique problem. Articles like this are all too commonplace these days. They typically read in one of a narrow group of ways. My husband and I don't have sex and everything is better. My husband and I don't have sex and I am liberated. My husband and I don't have sex and he broke our vows. In every instance, the writer is talking about how unimportant sex is in a committed relationship, and in every instance, the writer also seems to be completely unaware of just how insulting and hurtful they are being by writing about the most intimate aspects of the relationship. We will get to that, though. I do have to point out that this is not a gendered issue. Men and women both can be having problems with sexual intimacy. However, these articles, by and large, are written by women speaking about their husbands. That's why I'm covering these articles and why I'm referring to them using wife and husband. For the Everything is Better articles, the impression is that the relationship has progressed past the need for sex. That does happen in relationships often enough, when they are passing into the third or fourth decade as a couple. There's a natural decrease in the libido that often but not always results in an eventual lack of need for sex as a routine aspect of romantic relationships. If this is happening naturally as a mutually acceptable change in a relationship, then that's perfectly fine. For the I am liberated articles, I find myself wondering if this is a mutually decided liberation. I also question the health of a relationship in which a member finds themselves to be liberated by a lack of sex. It seems to me that this kind of change being greeted with such enthusiasm indicates that the liberated member was deeply unhappy with physical intimacy, which doesn't exactly speak to a happy and healthy relationship. It would seem to imply that sex was a burden from which freedom is now achieved. Not exactly a promising indicator of the strength of the romance. For the Broke Our Vows articles, like the one featured in this episode, I find that everyone with whom I have discussed this article had the same sort of initial response as I did, whether they were male or female. Nah, really? What did you think would happen? And this surprises you, how? Common sense seems to dictate that an unexpected cessation of physical intimacy in the relationship creates tension and can destroy the relationship. Gee, Roast, it sounds like you think that the husband was justified in committing adultery. Um, no. Just, no. I'm not saying that anything excuses having an affair. While some relationships are open, I personally couldn't be part of such a relationship. Call me a caveman, but I think that being in a relationship means that you forsake all others and dedicate yourself to proving every day how wonderful and important your partner is to you and to the rest of the world. When both partners do this at the start of a relationship, yeah, it looks sappy. When they still do it 10 or 20 years into the relationship, it's more sweet than sappy. When they still show the same love and support for each other after 50 years or more, then it's downright touching. I'm also not saying that a relationship cannot survive the loss of physical intimacy. It can, and many relationships do survive just fine. Having said those things, though, I have to wonder if the authors of such articles stop to think that there might be something wrong if they have lost all of their sex drive suddenly. 
Loss of libido is a recognized medical symptom of many issues. Some of these things are interpersonal problems, some of them are mental health issues, and sometimes a loss of libido can indicate serious physiological problems. Relationship problems, stress, anxiety, exhaustion, depression, substance abuse, side effects from prescription medications, surgery, hormonal changes, arthritis, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, neurological disorders. All of these can be indicated by a loss of libido. Reduced libido is an occasional side effect of surgery. It could be because of an unresolved issue between partners, a lack of effective communication between them, more time spent apart from one another, or ongoing trust issues. It could even result as a side effect of pregnancy and childbirth. Whatever it is, a sudden loss of sex drive is an indication that something isn't right and it's worth discussing with a doctor. There are treatments for loss of libido due to physiological reasons. Counseling is available for relationship and psychological issues. Who knows, perhaps discussing this with a doctor could result in the diagnosis of a serious disease which can then be treated and save your life. I certainly wouldn't want to let such a situation continue unabated and ignored for five months. Of all the possible causes for a loss of libido, the most common in young people all have to do with relationship issues. In most cases, those issues can be and should be resolved. It might take some hard work to get through all of them, but if the effort is made by both partners, then the relationship can be strengthened immeasurably. Ignoring the situation will create relationship issues even when none existed previously. If one partner still has a normal sex drive, then that partner will often feel rejected by their opposite who has little to no desire for sex. Frustration plus a sense of rejection contribute to I only have eyes for you becoming Good Lord, would you look at that? My parents called it the marital obligation. It always sounded a little mechanical to me before I was married. This sense that physical intimacy was a requirement for a healthy relationship. Now that I am older, I understand what they meant. It plays merry havoc with emotions and self-image when the person with whom one wants to be intimate doesn't feel the same. Too often, the need for physical intimacy is simply filled elsewhere, and the relationship crumbles. So I have to ask people who experience a lack of desire, is your partner in your relationship worth the effort to identify the cause? Are they worth trying to resolve the issue? For me, the answer would be a resounding yes. Getting back to something I mentioned earlier, this genre of article seems to ignore a fundamental aspect of a loving relationship. Trust. Do you imagine that the author's partners were thrilled to have details of their personal relationships published? I don't. It's derogatory of their ability to satisfy the author. It is mortifying to think of how embarrassed the partner might be by statements of how liberating a lack of sex is in an intimate relationship. I wouldn't wish such an embarrassing situation on anyone, no matter how much I dislike them. The article which I read may strike some as enlightening, but to me it's petty revenge and stupidity. It's almost certain that those who know the author personally also at least know of their former partner, if they don't know them personally. While the article highlights the lack of intimacy, it also highlights the fact that the author's former husband had an affair. Hell, it trumpets it to complete strangers. Sounds pretty spiteful to me, or at least blissfully ignorant of the effect that this article may have upon the former partner who just lost a big part of his or her privacy. Now that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with it. In fact, I'd love to hear what you think, so go ahead and give me a like or dislike and comment below. If you like this content and want to see more, feel free to subscribe and make sure that you ring the notification bell. New episodes of Rested Opinions post on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Join me on the last Saturday of every month when I invite guests to join me in the kitchen. New content is coming, so watch this space.